All right, Huntley community, it is time for the 2023 Outdoorsman of the Year. Tonight, we are announcing the top three finalists that are moving to the live judges panel that will happen at the end of the month or early February, where we announce the league winner. But tonight, we have brought together the winners, the league champions from the past three years. It's the first time we've ever done this. It's a new wrinkle we're adding to the Outdoorsman of the Year. We're bringing the 2020, 2021, and 2022 champions together. They are reviewing the candidates for this year. As former winners, they know what it takes to become the Outdoorsman of the Year, and they know what they're looking for. So we're gonna dive right into the discussion as we review the candidates and select the finalists for the 2023 Outdoorsman of the Year. If you would like to skip ahead, you can just go straight to the end of this video and you can reveal the top three. But if you're interested in figuring out the process, what goes into it, what are the judges looking for, use this video as an educational piece to help better prepare you because the 2024 season has just begun. Good luck, everybody. Let's dive in. All right, this is the first time that we've ever had the three champions on at the same time. Like, we've never had the 2020 Outdoors of the Year, 2021, and 2022. So, uh, congratulations, gentlemen. You guys are the uh, the only Outdoors in, the Hunt League Outdoors of the Year winners in the world. So, I'm going to go around real quick and just say, all right, Pete Mosby, you were the first one ever. Uh, what did this award mean to you when you won the Outdoorsman of the Year in 2020? Um, well, what it meant to me was, first of all, complete shock. Um, <laughs> I went up against some really outstanding individuals that year. Luckily, um, you know, like Raymond and Crayson weren't in there either because otherwise they wouldn't have had a chance to help. But um, the award, I mean, it was just really cool. Just the recognition. I like to say bragging rights, but really just a lot of things landed in place for me. And so it was quite an honor. I was beside myself. And then to see progressively the years afterwards, I'm glad I got mine in 2020 because I don't think I have a chance in hell in the future. <laughs> Uh, Grayson, tell me what that winning the yeah. outdoors of the year meant to you personally. I uh, man, it gave me a lot of confidence. It um, it proved a lot of things that I worked hard for. Uh, I I had a YouTube channel going, and it was just like it was booming after that. And um, uh, I really just uh, took that uh, competition very seriously, and uh, met some great people on the way. I competed against three people in the finals, so it was like even harder. <laughs> so, um, cause they were all really good guys, um, real sportsmen and um, just, had great, just, just great guys. So um, going up against them and beating them, uh, we're still all really close. And uh, I don't know, it was just a turnaround year for me and meant so much to me and um, Love to add that on to my resume in a way. So, all right, Ray, you are the most recent sure. champion. Um, you had an awesome year last year. Got to do a couple exotic things. Uh, taking a was was your bison last year? I know you had a caribou. Was it a caribou yeah. and bison? Yeah, you got yeah, you got to do some really year, fun so. exotic stuff. But what did this uh, award mean to you? Well, it was uh, one of the most exciting parts of my hunting career. Um, I like Grayson. Um, you know, I had a little uh, slower previous years and I was getting kind of um, sad. You know, I didn't have any hunting friends or any community. And then when I got into Hunt League and then I was actually had a chance to win the Outdoorsman of the Year, uh, it really got bad to drive to get out there again. And uh, so after that, fo this following year, the year I wear now, the, um, I'm a totally different person now. I, I've I kicked my butt and I've, I've covered many mountain ranges and I've actually turned on more uh, podcasts and videos and learning more. And I think that all I needed was that little kick because I was getting pretty down that I, I didn't have the community I needed. But now that I'd won that, I use, I use that as a little flex when I'm talking to other people. I'm like, hey, I won this rifle from Outdoorsman of the Year. And they're like, oh, what's that? And I pull up the app and it's it's brought a lot of camaraderie and uh, brotherhood through all the people I'm meeting now. 
Man, that's so cool to hear. And you, you've put that new rifle to pretty good use, you and your family. Oh, yeah. We all want to use it. Yeah, what are some of the things that you were able to take this year with that rifle? Cole shot his uh, cow elk. I shot my bull elk on opening day with that on, on adult season. Daniel shot a coyote with it. Daniel shot his bull elk and then his buck with it. Now I have to kind of go back and apologize to Peter and Grayson because they were the year previous year's winners and those previous year winners didn't have cool rifles and stuff in it. So as as this has grown, I mean, Peter Mosby kind of started when it was like uh, the 2020 outdoors in the year. I was like, man, I'm just going to throw $1,500 in a prize package. I was going to spend, we didn't have any sponsors, anything like that. Vortex thankfully jumped in and then that prize package ended up growing pretty quick right after that. Grayson jumped in in a great year and then 2022 was just over the top uh, with the, with Seekins jumping in and getting to top that off with the Vortex optic of your choice uh, made for a pretty unbelievable setup. Um, all right, we're going into the 2023. I'm having the former champions. You guys are helping me select the finalists out of the pool of candidates uh, for this 2023 calendar year. So before we dive into any specifics with candidates, I want to get from you guys, what are you looking for for this 2023 Outdoors of the Year? What's capturing your attention? Pete, let's start with you. Well, I think it, after a number of years of uh, development with the Hutton League, I think it's kind of changed a little bit from when I started in 2020. Um, you know, it was still in its infancy. I was using the app, but the app has become so much more now, just in the last few years. So what I'm looking for is a combination of what we've had in the past, as well as what Hunt League brings to the current and future. And that is, first of all, yeah, being in the out outdoors, respecting nature, leaving it better than we found it, um, carrying it forward, teaching others, kids and adults how uh, to be successful or experience the outdoors and enjoy the what the outdoor gives us. Um, uh, but then on top of that, I really think taking advantage of what the app offers is really important to looking for the actual use of the app, looking for having a measure of success, but also then helping others be successful, even if it's just being outside, experiencing it and and enjoying the love of nature. Sure. Grayson, how about you? What is this? What are you looking for as we look to crown the 2023 champion? Um, things that I look for definitely comes down to what people are learning and what they're sharing about that on the app. Um, building community and giving those educational bits that you do pick up in the field. And every time you go out, you learn something. Um, and sharing that is is crucial. Um, I want to see good sportsmanship, uh, sportsmanship and um, uh, also looking to see who's getting the next generation into hunting. I do like to see uh, a lot of like the posts and stuff, but um, uh, I like seeing people that know different species and what they're hunting. So uh, you yeah. know, how many there are harvesting like if they if they're doing bird hunting in the, in the winter and then they're also chasing elk in the fall or deer or whatever they're doing but um covering a wide range of animals so you can pick up the most not just focusing only on the big game but uh i think that's that's sure. a, wide, a wide variety of what i'm looking for yeah when you're looking for an outdoorsman of the year you want somebody that might be well-rounded in some of the different disciplines of being a hunter and an outdoorsman so you got small game big game predator uh, we've got different birds, waterfowl, all that stuff's listed. Um, you know, I think sometimes we have a tendency just to have guys that are elk or deer or, you know, a big okay. game, you know, but they're leaving some of the predator stuff. The other part of that, I think, with the diversity is just different methods of take. Um, I always think I always find that interesting. Like, Pete, that was one of the things in your first year that uh, a lot of the judges took notice of because you I think you had taken eight different species with five different methods of take you know you had the crossbow in there the bow rifle shotgun and was it was your elk a muzzle loader is that what it was yeah yep. elk was a muzzle loader yeah so doing having that level of diversity i thought that was pretty cool all right yeah. ray to you what are you looking for this year for the 2023 outdoorsman of the year i've been looking at these um applicants and i'm thinking 
uh, somebody who's been trying new things, stepping out of their comfort zone. Um, not just the normal, I hunt whitetail only, uh, trying different areas, different animals, different, uh, methods of take and learning from that. I like the idea of the diversity of, of all that because it, it gets them out of their comfort zone and then they can educate themselves and grow as an outdoorsman. I also like the, the involvement in the, the ecosystem, uh, the fish and game part where, or the uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, you know, the pass on into the next generation with the mentorship and then, you know, cleaning up our, our uh, it's eco- ecosystem restoration. We're losing our ground. And if somebody's getting involved with that, that's perfect. Yeah. I like the sharing. I, I enjoy watching how people share on the app. Um, so I would like to see somebody who uses the app um, because it's it's here for us to all learn from each other. And I, I would appreciate if it was utilized. Yeah. You know, honestly, one of the things that I feel like I saw a decline in this past year in the way that people shared information that was was kind of kind of made me feel sad was uh, one of the things that I love that you have the ability to do is share your failures um, and share the days that you don't harvest anything, but you're just like, Hey, I'm out. I saw something or I didn't see anything. Um, Like one of the things that I love about kind of the Huntley community and what we're capable of doing is sharing the authenticity of the hunt and not just the success points. Like I feel like, you know, what you get on Instagram or Facebook or other social platforms is, you know, you just get the success story. Everybody wants to sit behind horns or holding something up or that kind of thing. What I really loved and love about the community is the ability to share like just your time in the field, because I think you're, there's so much that you learn when you spend time in the field. And I, and I feel like I'm started to see a little bit of a tendency to people just kind of holding off to just post when they are successful. And Mm. I would love in this 2024 year to see a return to just like sharing the number of days in the field and us still being able to celebrate the days that people get to spend in the field without finding success. I think that's a critical component of hunting. And I think it's a part too that people need to realize like, okay, you guys as outdoorsmen of the year, Grayson in 2021, you had an incredibly successful year, but you also put in an extraordinary amount of days that you were not successful and you shared those days with us and with the community. And I thought that was a real value to the community where people see that like, okay, these guys, you know, they're hunting similar grounds to what I can do. And it's just, you know, it's the effort, it's the work, it's just the tactics, the strategies, what you're learning in the field that ultimately you're able to, you know, employ to help you find success. So um, I do hope to see a return to that in 2024. All right. Without further ado, let's dive into some of the finalists. Who are some of the people you're looking at as being potential finalists for this? Pete, let, let's go ahead and start with you. I pulled it down to like my top four. The first one that I came up with was um, Cody. Uh, I really, I could really connect with the sneaking away right after having his baby girl. That's always a fun balance as we try to continue with our our passions and, you know, time away in the field, but, you know, also time with our family. Everything else that he had kind of spoke to his accomplishments and what stood out, a lot of different harvests, uh, three different methods of use, paying it forward, you know, taking people out hunting as well. And then the family family component, just that all that together is like, he was one of my top four. Yep. Who else is in there for you? Sure. Cody, James. Josh D and Wally King. Okay. I, I know all of them well through the community. Crayson, give me some of the guys that were sticking out to you. Well, I'll try not to repeat as much, but um, I Josh D, we've all known him. He's a great guy. He's really hard, hardcore um, black tail hunter. Uh, yep. He loves to help people out all the time. You see that constantly year after year of just how much he gives to other people and even setting them up on deer um just love the guy love his humbleness um he's not a huge bragger he's not trying to 
to just rub something in your face, but it, he's just he's just a good guy, and he's always getting it done. At some point, we probably need to check that box that Josh Dishman is an outdoors in the year because he checks all the boxes to be that. And uh, I don't know Josh Katanik. Is that, yep. is that easy to say it? Very much. I know he had an outstanding year. I mean, he, he took turkey, bear, wolf, elk, grouse, deer, pheasant, quail. I think it even goes on. I can't even see past that. Uh, the thing that kind of stuck out to me is that he wasn't using the app very much. It looks like he only had 10 hunts, hunt logs filed or um, inputted. And to me, it's like he's one of those uh, right now. It's it's like we want someone that's using the app, communicating, building the community up, up and up. So um, I think I think his but, to speak to that a little bit, the drawback for him was he didn't he didn't download the app until I think the end of September. And so most ooh, of his yeah. hunts that he did throughout the year, he hadn't he hadn't heard of Hunt League. I don't want to disqualify him based on the year he had either, you know? Um, right. totally get it. But totally I, I get it. feedback on that. Like I think that's I think that's a critical component. It's kind of what Pete was saying early on, where it's like you yeah. want to see that use in the app as you're selecting a fine yeah. list. Can I just add to that too? That's why I did put him in one of my top four. Sounds like he had a fantastic year, you know, but you know, this is also using the app as well to, to document it. That's great that he's on board and he's doing that. And I think next year he's going to be quite a contender too. But uh, I think that was important for me to be considered as one of my top. All right, Chris, was there anybody else on your list? Rich Mays is my fourth. He got, yeah. He had seven different species, uh, bow and shotgun kind of guy. I like it. Uh, and he's, you know, he's the only one that's like from California. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's good. I love the Oregon blood all in there. Love it. Love it. Love it. But, uh, I'm, it's, it's cool to see someone getting it done in a different state this year. I actually moved to Washington and it's been really hard for me to adjust and get out and find new land. And it's been, so exciting for myself. So just seeing other people get it done in a different state is just kind of inspiring to me right now. Um, but I, I loved seeing, um, this is one of the things is the new thing that you added to the app was the daily challenges and yeah. working with Bass Pro, I was able to shoot my bow almost every day. Um, so I would kept logging that shoot, logging that shoot. And I looked on, on here and he, uh, he added a lot. He had 550 daily challenge totaled, um, so that to me was like, oh, he's used, he's on the app every day. He's he's using it quite a bit if he's logging those. And yeah. that was something else that stuck out to me. All right, Ray, um, let's hear from yes, you. Sir. What are the things that stuck out to you? Well, uh, like Chris was saying, moving to another state and uh, hunting. I did that six years ago in Washington. I still can't find a spot. Um, it's rough. So that's why <laughs> I really liked Josh uh, Katanik. He moved to Idaho two years ago and he learned that land and he learned where he could and couldn't go. And he hunted all these species he's never even hunted before. I know you say you can't fault him for not using the app. So it's kind of a hard one there because I love his season. I sure. love that he he got out there and didn't know a thing about the land he was in and he figured it out. I have Wally in here as well. I really liked Wally's... Um, ability to share everything he's done he's got a youtube channel and he's got it he's on the app i see him posting something at least twice three times a week uh he's yeah. getting his kids involved and he's um doing the conservation effort i like to see that that he did the fence pull for the fishing game he didn't he didn't hunt a lot but he did persevere through that back injury and in his in his illness but uh um he he put in the hard work for that cow elk and and he he studied their habits and got on them. I um I had number four, and uh, Bradley Joyce. I just I I see him a lot. He's really relevant in my mind because I I see something from him everywhere, and we're we're following each other, each other on social media, so that's probably why I see a lot of him as well. But sure, he's sharing a lot of knowledge. I like that he started hunting from basics. He didn't 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 know anything. I like that he's able to just pick this up and commit a lot of mind effort into it. And he's developed into um, a pretty, pretty good hunter and he understands quite a bit. Um, that's why I threw him on there as, uh, as my close number four. I was between him and Wally, but um, I'm, 
I think Wally has, uh, he's done a little bit more outdoors to help the, the sport. The stuff that really sticks out to me about Bradley, and I don't want this to be like a reward for somebody that is contributing to the app, but you know, he launched that Wild Food League, and that was his initiative. All the sponsors that, that are on that, you know, and he brought in a handful of sponsors, a lot of them from Oregon, you know, with his steel port knives, with the My Medic, with um, he got Forlow involved. He's got a lot of different, I mean, he brought a lot of value to the community. His involvement in Hunt League has meant the most probably to me of anybody in the app throughout this year. For that reason, you know, creating the league and taking that initiative. And then the second thing is he came and filmed on the On Point experience and just volunteered his time, covered all of his own expenses, came and filmed, was participated in camp. And like what he contributed to the Huntley community was significant and substantial this year, you know, without him having any role, title. I'm so grateful for Bradley Joyce this year. Um, does that mean that he should be a finalist in the outdoors of the year? Like that's up to you guys to decide, but I don't want, I'm not putting that pressure on you. Like, cause I'm just like, man, I, but he's somebody that when I look at the community, I'm like, man, I'm incredibly grateful for his contribution this year to the Huntley community. Cause it's been significant. Can you guys sell me on rich? I've noticed him posting a few times, but I didn't, I never like really caught on. Yeah. So I think, I think I might be missing something because it looks like you guys think highly of him. So I wanted to see what was missing there. He's also a member of national elk foundation, wild Turkey foundation, ducks unlimited for what it's worth. He just, I liked him because he was, um, <clears throat> really well rounded in a lot of different areas. I don't know why. You know, when you read something and you just say oh, something about it that you just like, it wasn't just big game. He also had the grouse and morning dove turkey. Yeah. He had the deer, kind of like Wally, too, because he also had a mixed bag. Chad Fiber hunted in five states. He's got three kids that are hunting with him. Chad does. He's he's getting his kids out there. I think I you know you could you could dig pretty deep into this and probably justify eight out of the ten that you have there could probably you know we could have an argument for them to be in the top three. But then I yeah. think it also comes down to especially you, Jared. But we're not counting you. You know, Grayson Raymond and I look at these guys. I think we got a pretty good gut of who the top people would be when it came down to the finals and an interview and who has a pretty good shot at uh, winning the whole thing. All three of us agreed on Cody. The co I would say Dang. Cody's in. Yeah. Then we got 3.5 with Wally, and then we got four on the dot with Rich, um, which kicks both the Joshes out. Let's just, for the sake of the exercise, if you had to just select one, who would that be? Cody. I really like uh Josh Kandanik. And I still like Josh Dishman probably as my second or as my as my guy. Give me an argument for somebody else that should outpace one of those three. Well, uh, I like Wally. Uh, I, yeah, Wally. I was going to say Wally. You know, if we look across the overall rank on stuff, Cody comes out at number one just at, with a collective combined, all the factors that we've put in, including judges' scores. Wally comes out at number two, and he's kind of finding himself on the bubble. Rich came out as number three, and I think his daily challenge points put him up there. His The number of hunts he logged, shared, those types of things. Josh Dishman coming in at four, and then Josh Katana coming in at eight on the overall rank. And I think that has to do with his score lowers, not because of the judge's opinion of him, but because of his use of the app and... Yeah. Um, you know, the lack of quantitative data and analysis that we have on his season compared to some of the others. That stuck out to you, Pete, is why he may not have been in your top three. And that's just because he didn't have the numbers based in the app. If we had to say somebody is safe. I do like Wally um, going more towards being in the top finals here. Who had kind of one of those years that like you may not ever repeat in your lifetime. Getting a wolf, getting a mountain lion, getting a bear getting an elk, getting deer, <clears throat> turkey. Like his list was just exceptional. This could be a banner year, like a highlight year of his life. He also 
had a guy he, he invited down to hunt for bear and then he didn't get a bear but he called that guy back and said i know where a cougar's at and he got that friend he had him hunt that cougar a little selfless there you know he, he gave up a kill gave up a, a hunt for somebody who who's fairly new to this sport Pete, you know Wally. I, I don't want that to be a biased decision. You guys actually just returned from a hunt. <clears throat> well, that's why I've, I've, I've been kind of mute about Wally and not really sharing a lot. Actually, to tell you about Wally, he's OCD, period, for sure. And when he says OCD hunter, he's just OCD whenever he does something. Hunting is new to Wally, just like I think he was, I can't remember how old he was when he started, not that long ago. and. He started archery in my backyard and got his first bow. I sighted it. I sighted it in for him. He's over at my house shooting all the time. He's got his son into it. His son is really um, a gamer. And so he's really used the outdoors, pulled his son out into the outdoors, uh, which, which is just a great way to do it. But if you dig a little deeper, he talks to everybody about hunting and the food that he gets from the hunting. And he does this huge elaborate breakdown of animals in a kitchen. He's got a fancy grinder now, and he's always introducing his neighbors to wild game and so on. But this year was exceptional for him. He's always learning, trying new stuff. He has more gear than I could. I It's uncomfortable how much gear he has. He's an example of someone that started with zero background and has really dedicated himself after failure, after failure, after failure, after failure, after failure, after failure and had an ending year. That's the growth I was talking about. He put all that together, found his flaws and fixed them. The number one overall point total person is James Mansanti. What is keeping him off of your radar? Well, I was just going to say what we spoke to earlier. We're looking for someone that has that diverse hunting experience and he has three big game animals with two methods of take uh i didn't see other logs or anything of other type of hunting that he did besides the big game and we spoke about that earlier we're looking for someone that does more than just big game um when i first went through all these i i almost treated like a job interview uh, application and it was the lack of information on the application it didn't have a lot of detail. So I kind of, you know, pushed him back and looked at more thorough applicants. I don't see a whole lot on his postings. A lot. I, I didn't even know about him until we were reading these applications. When we're talking about like the family component, James had that hunt with his dad and was able to help his dad harvest first elk. I think they did some stuff in Montana. So they did another state. And that was a pretty significant hunt because I know family is an important component of this equation too. As we're going to three, it always becomes hard because we, we are definitely leaving some quality people right on the outside of the bubble. And that's what happens every year. That's why the year that Grayson won four, we couldn't come down to three, but we're done with four. We have to do three. We've got one. Let's fill these last two spots. Pete, if you had to say, your next person in. Who's your next person in? Um, I'm going to say it's either Dishman or Wally King. I still, I don't know. I can't get past the part where, you know, he had someone that had an exceptional year hunting, the other Josh, but really didn't use the app. So he showed up late. He showed up late. I don't think he's qualified for this year. I, people hear that feedback too and realize like, I better freaking download the app and start using it. <laughs> I agree with Pete on that. We we haven't seen enough of him to know what what he's uh, capable of and what he's improving on. When I joined on in one twenty twenty one, I think I joined in July, so I only had six months to input, and that was enough to do my September season. Um, but I went after it. I started logging immediately. I started scouting, and I I ended up getting up to the, I think it was the second highest with the hunt logs, and I was using the app, and that's that's just because I heard it from off a podcast that I competed with, with Garrett, uh, Garrett was doing the podcast and I heard about Hunt League, did it in the end of July and August started filling Saturday or September, October, November. And I, we ended, I ended up winning. So um, him coming late to the game and uh, I think he won the September award. So, uh, you know, he, he had a really good year, but I do want to see someone that's dominating the app um, and using it 
efficiently. Um, yeah. For my second, after talking, after uh, hearing your guys' points and stuff, I'm going to go with Wally as my second role fill spot there. I think that's, I think that's my guy for for number two. And I know I didn't vouch for him earlier on, but hearing more and more about him um, just really kind of opened my eyes of what he's bringing to the table as a contender for this. Ray, how are you feeling? Because initially it was two Joshes and uh, Cody, and now I'm hearing Josh Katonic sliding out and Wally coming in. I've always liked Wally and uh, Cody, but I was torn Josh Dishman. It seems like the same season as last year, so I, that's why I didn't pick him. But that's he true. is a great guy, and he, he's so selfless. And um, I just didn't see anything banner-worthy, like, different or growth there the new thing that josh did this year was he hosted that veteran hunt which i thought was really cool like he oh i forgot about that but he took a veteran on a hunt was actually able to use the 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 gun that he won in the western hunt league last year the bergara and that veteran was able to use that gun and put a deer down and that that thing has been lights out that that crest rifle that would be something that i think would add to Josh's season as something that was unique this year. Another question that comes to mind, if you had to trade your season for anybody else, if if you asked me if I could have anybody's season, whose season would I take? It would probably be Josh Katanik's. So, Jared, um, I agree with you. If I was going to pick a season, I'd want Katanik's, hands down. That was just epic. But again, I'm going to go back to, I don't think he meets what I consider the criteria for uh, total outdoorsman just because of his late arrival and use of the hat. I know you guys have mentioned uh, Josh Tishman. You know, we don't know if this is like a standard year because it's pretty much what he did last year. But that's still pretty impressive. I mean, he had an impressive year last year. He made finalists. He's had an impressive year this year. I don't think that should be a reason that he should be eliminated. I actually think that's a stronger reason why he should be one of the three because he's just showed some consistently strong two years in a row, uh, great seasons. It's hard to do that back to back to back, and he's been doing it for a while. I know it's been, and, you know, last year I was a judge for this, for the 2022 Outdoorsman of the Year, and it was hard coming down between Ray and Josh. And, I mean, it was just like, and Cody, I was like, this is hard and because he was a very good candidate, but um, yeah, I, with that veterans hunt and everything he did, that's, I just know he's a solid, solid guy. Um, but yeah, I don't know who else to, to pick between it's, it's, it's gotta be between these two Josh's here. Um, what, what are your thoughts, Ray? Josh Katanik's got a lot of great stories with his, that's, I think they would make a very interesting um panel i forgot all about josh dishman's um uh, veterans outreach which is that that's very admirable you know it shows his selflessness selflessness is quite high um i don't know i still like uh Katanic just because that was my number one at the beginning i understand why uh, you wouldn't uh pete because of his his in, late entry but that doesn't take away his late entry didn't take away from his ability to be an outdoorsman it's just in relevance to this uh app and community we have he wasn't uh wasn't on board until late which i think chris and i both we we didn't post a lot until it got near the end of the uh season when we uh when we won ray and peter you guys have both put up good arguments chris and i think you land in the middle because you were a little bit in that mid a late season arrival, like July, kind of the latter half of a year, and then ended up finishing it out. But I I do kind of agree with Pete, like a part of this is the use of the app. Jared, real quick, you know, Grayson is a different animal because, yeah, he started in July, but he started using the app right away. I mean, he was consistent and shared his stories. And I mean, I didn't even realize he started late because he was so consistent with what, sharing his experiences and everything. So, and even cross my radar. Sure. Yeah, I think I was still over 60 hunt logs and like 25 scouts. I think I was like, I was using it for the time I had. Um, and I look on hens and he, he only had 10, 10 hunt logs. Is that correct? Is that what we're seeing here? I think that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. But I, I would also say like, 
the majority of his hunting season was over where you got into predator and stuff like that pretty significantly, like where he did his bear was spring bear, his, you know, his wolf was in the spring, all those things that he did were in the spring coming in. So it's like, that was months before he had a chance at it. I'm not arguing for him. I, I want you to hear that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm truly not. Cause I actually think, I actually think like the value of having people in the app logging hunts and stuff, that's a significant value for me. So selfishly, I would probably land on Pete's side of the argument. Um, but I don't yeah. want, I don't want my selfish opinion there to dictate this. Cause I, I really do want to <laughs> take as good of a look at these guys and say, all right, who do we think deserves based on the year that they put up their interaction with the community, their involvement in conservation, their mentoring efforts, the whole package, who are our outdoors of the year. And I'll tell you, there's not a wrong answer when we're talking about these two Josh's. I respect whatever you guys decide. I'm going to be on board because I could argue for and against either one. My top three are going to be Cody, Wally, and Dishman. Yeah, I was thinking of going to Dishman at this moment because in, he's representing Hunt League. He has eight posts and uh, 33 summary posts. He's he's involved. I, I could easily change my vote for Dishman right now. It's funny because I was swinging the same way as you. I'm just like, now I'm like, Josh K. I mean, he's that <sighs> year is tough to beat. And I hate to do it to you, but it's like I got to be honest right now. It's 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 fifty fifty right now, and it's between you and me. Both of them won. Western Hunter was Dishman. Josh was Sweet September. We uh, both originally had a gut feeling about Katonic. I think if that was our pick, if Pete's out of it, I think we're gonna go with Katonic. I think that's I think that's my yeah. thought. That's my that's my final. That's what I was thinking. We both had a gut feeling about it, and for our reasons, which those reasons didn't change. I'm sure Josh Katonic is going to, he's going to be a hunt league member for life and he's going to be, you know, he's, he's hooked. I mean, I think it's, I think it's going to be his platform. I think he just came to the game late and had an amazing year and uh, I want to see him compete. I want to see him be a finalist here. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, Wally uh, King. You have advanced to the finals. You had a great season. Looking forward to see how you compete here in the, as a finalist. Congratulations to Josh Katanic. You made 2023 outdoorsman of the year finalist. Hey Cody, congratulations on another exceptional year. I know you already won the On Point experience, but now you're going head to head with Josh and Wally for the 2023 Outdoorsman of the Year.